Hi, I'm Guy Berger from Palms Trading Company here in beautiful Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is our second installment of suggestions on what to collect, uh, whether you want to do uh, a family or just higher end pieces or try to get one from several different pueblos. You can also uh, collect pots from the same artist but different shapes, sizes, uh, price ranges, etc., or different periods or eras of their life. Some people have said that Palms just has uh, lower end jewelry and pottery. Well, I can assure you that isn't the case. We get high end pots that I'm going to show you here in a minute, and even higher end jewelry pieces by the likes of Tommy Singer um, and many others. So I'll start here with Daryl Whitegeese, who is the son of Luan Tafoya. He's the grandson of Margaret Tafoya. That's a suggestion that you might want to collect several different generations of potters. The one in the back here is Robert Tenorio's pot from Santo Domingo. He is probably considered the most important potter from Santo Domingo. Does things all in natural paints, even down to the egg white he uses to uh, used for the polish of the pot. This pot is a real sweetie uh, from Lucy Lewis of Acoma Pueblo. I believe there's 14 hardline deer on here. This pot was done in 1961. Uh, one of our finer pieces that we have here at Palms. The more modern potter is Wilma Baca from uh, Jemez Pueblo. She is a terrific potter that not only does a great shape, different sizes, different shapes, but uh, good polish and then with the scrofito work on it, if you can see here there's a spot where there's a ribbon that goes all the way around this pot. Um, all of these potters are in the top 10% of their pueblos. Uh, this is a deceased artist, Sylvia Naha from Hopi. One of the pots she did uh, before she passed away and just a beautiful smooth, shiny polish with her signature uh, lizards and each one has a little bit different uh, design work in it. This pot is from BJ Frawa from Jemez Pueblo. She does many different shapes and styles. Uh, the, the base is even made from clay. And you can see she was very excited about showing us this one. Uh, the only one she's ever done and she said she may not ever do another one again because of the difficulty of the shape and uh, the base. Moving over to my left here, this is a blue corn pot from San Ildefonso. Very unusual polychrome pot with a very light tan slip. Moving over, a Zuni pot from Noreen Simplicio. She does a lot of different uh, style pots, even with three-dimensional lizards and frogs, with uh, sometimes little pueblos on the top of the pot with people running around. She's one of the top-end Zuni potters of today. Moving over to an Acoma pot, this is a Barbara and Joseph Cerno's pot, a very classic pot uh, with the rainbow design and also the Acoma parrot. Uh, they've been uh, coming to us for years and years, and we've sold literally hundreds of their pots, even though they're not cheap, but they're kind of one of the standard bearers of Acoma. And then finally, over here on uh, the end is a Sandra Victorino pot. She was taught to paint by Dorothy Trivio, the, uh, the famous potter from Acoma. And as you can see, inside, Sandra even painted inside the rim of this pot. But each panel has squares and then fine line, and each one of those little fine line diamonds are painted by hand with a yucca brush. So there you have some examples of high-end pottery that we come across here at Palms. If you'd like to know a little bit more about these pots or have a, have a uh, request for something that may be hard to find, Maybe we can help you out, but I really appreciate you uh, watching our videos, and we'll look forward to seeing you next.